Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, the Daniel Fast is a good way to jumpstart your health. It's a spiritual base of 21 days focusing on healthy whole foods such as vegetables, fruit, beans, nuts, seeds, and whole grains and legumes. So it's similar to a vegan diet. Um, it requires eliminating of processed foods, uh, meat, sugar, alcohol, caffeine, and refined carbs, and also dairy. So that's a lot. You know, a lot of people do <laughs> eat those <laughs> type of food. And so, you know, I'm sure it's very difficult to do. But my guest today is we'll talk about her experience with the Daniel Fast. I am Dr. Ramona Lazard. Thank you for joining me today. And on this channel, you'll learn about fitness and functional nutrition. I'm on a mission to help women 50 and over move freely and fearless without using medication. I'm super excited for the guest on my show today. Her name is Linda Nias. She's a single mom, an entrepreneur, accountant, a notary public, uh, independent Medicare cell agent. She earned her BA in accounting and currently is working as a notary public and an independent Medicare sales agent. Okay, let's see. All right, so everybody just please help me welcome Linda Nias to the show. I thank you for being here today. And how are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. That is great. So I'd love to hear more about you. Uh, just tell us a little bit more about yourself, you know, how you started your business, and then we'll dive into some questions that I have. Okay, uh, as uh, Ramona stated, I am a single parent. Um, I um, found myself at the age of 18 pregnant with my one and only child. And uh, it had been a long life dream for me to go directly into college uh, because no one in my family had ever gone beyond high school. And so lo and behold, two months after graduating from high school, I'm pregnant. And uh, so I did not let that stop me. Uh, my daughter has been had been in college ever since she was in an infant seat <laughs> up until the time that uh, she was in the 10th grade, because that was when I finally got my degree completed. My goal was to get out of college before she started. So I, I got a degree in accounting. And the reason I got a degree in accounting was because my counselor told me that if I um, wanted to make sure that I could get a job anywhere, I could choose from the field of accounting, nursing, um, hotel, hospitality, and food service. So out of all of those things, I you know, chose accounting. And luckily, accounting was something that I adapted to very easily. I, you know, The numbers and the spreadsheets and all of the things uh, just came very easy for me. The only thing was that I was not able to uh, complete the CPA exam. And that's a good thing because I probably would have been tied down to a career that I I love, but I'm not as good as a professional in. So um, I do have one daughter and uh, she does have uh, two young adults that are Christians. And um, so that is uh, my story. Well, uh, you said, how do I get in my business? Um, like I said, I worked in accounting for two years after I got my degree and I soon learned that I was not happy in that position, but I still love the, the business of accounting. So I've always worked as a, um, a corporate trainer or um, a project manager or something along that line. And after I left corporate America, then I, I just worked as on contract you know, positions with corporate America in different aspects. But when I finally decided to walk away from corporate America, I did get into retail sales, open up a, a store in the... Um, prominent mall here in uh, North Texas and stayed in that for two years. And after I uh, closed the store in the mall, then I operated a small art gallery for about nine years. Uh, and then after that, I got my life insurance license and uh, I worked as an independent life insurance salesman uh, from 2000 to 2010. And then it was in 2010 that I got my certification with a major um, healthcare company providing Medicare insurance. And so that is where I am today. And I love the fact that um, I can help people understand what is available 
uh, and uh, the choices that they have and help them to, you know, guide them through making the right choice. When I um, became eligible for Medicare, I was reading up on everything that was available and with so many decisions. And I said, a person can get confused in trying to make a choice. And because my entire career had been built on being a project manager or somewhere along that line, I decided to study for getting certified as a Medicare specialist. And uh, I have been there since 2010. That's my story. Yeah, no, that's a great story. I mean, you definitely have a lot of, you know, background education about, you know, accounting and then Medicare. That's something I'm familiar with, you know, with the people that I, you know, I work for and um, also, you know, the clients that are utilizing Medicare because it definitely is can be confusing because, right. you know, when it comes down to, uh, you know, they enter their care, they want to know, like, can they get it? <laughs> extra therapy or, you know, you know, do I have to pay extra yes. money or something like that? So, you know, Medicare are always, you know, reducing, you know, amount of benefit for individuals. And so, you know, they're, they're definitely looking for someone like you to help them, you know, along the way. So I'm, I'm glad that you're doing that. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit more about the uh, Daniel fast? Um, and then, you know, how did you stay committed? And then how much weight did you lose? Well, I, I belong to a fairly large church here in North Texas. It's Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, Dr. Tony Evans. And every year the entire church um, commits, well, it, there's an opportunity for it, the members to participate in a fast. And it's usually the first week of uh, January and, um, you know, we go through certain different programs and et cetera. And generally it has been that you choose whatever fast you want to. But this year... Uh, they put the option out there for us to participate in the Daniel Fast. And I really was not familiar with the Daniel Fast, but of course they educated us on it before we started it. And uh, so uh, I made the commitment and uh, it was truly <laughs> a sacrifice for me because I am a coffee-holic and a bacon-holic, Okay. And so uh, I had to, uh, I studied up on it and they said, you know, we're going to give up on all meat products, uh, give up on all uh, dairy products and all meat byproducts and uh, uh, no coffee, no uh, beverages, and mainly stick to a, basically a vegetarian diet for 21 days. So, uh, of course, a couple of the first couple of days was kind of a struggle for me. I had all my things out, but, you know, I still was having my yearnings for my bacon and my coffee. But at the end of the 21 days, I had so adjusted that um, I did go back and start drinking my coffee. That was the first thing I did after the 21 days. But I made the commitment that I was going to... Uh, refrain from the meat products. I was, I, I did add seafood. So since January the 1st of this year, I've had no beef, no chicken, no pork. Okay. <laughs> wow. I have, yeah. I, I have uh, incorporated into my diet shrimp, tuna, uh, the swordfish and um, whiting. Those are the seafoods. And crab, because I did uh, make me a crab dish uh, last week that I was able to uh, consume for three three days, put in three different sauces in it to make it a, a different dish. But um, from that, keeping uh, the meat products out of my diet, I have lost uh, 20 plus pounds. Wow, and congratulations. I must, I must say that it does, um, I can see there's a difference, you know, in... Um, it's a reduction in sluggishness and of, you know, feeling bloated because, you know, I don't have all of that stuff that takes a long period of time in my system. And by eating more fruit and vegetables, uh, it's helping to, to keep my digestive system, you know, regular. As a matter of fact, right now I have <laughs> a smoothie and uh, this yes. smoothie has, it has mango, banana, um, it's a mango, banana, and um, some collagen um, in my, uh, and cranberries in there and, uh, and water. And uh, that's, that's my, my lunch for today. So this morning for breakfast, I did fix myself a veggie uh, quesadilla 
Um, so it had, uh, you know, diced tomatoes and olives and um, uh, green uh, red onions and um, on a, two tortilla shells. And I have some vegan cheese that I've discovered. It's made from it's made from vegan products. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was my breakfast this morning, a vegan quesadilla. And then for lunch, I'm having this uh, smoothie. And then tonight I will um, have another <laughs> seafood dish. <laughs> but seafood I've dish. Very good. It hasn't been difficult. Uh, it's just a made up mind. I did discuss with my daughter that I was bored with my food because, you know, I was going through the same routines. I just wrote, rotate out my veg vegetables. But sometimes you just get, you know, bored with the food and, and I don't even eat half of what I prepare because, you know, my, my mind is telling me I want some chicken. <laughs> right. So it sounds like it's a, it could be a battle. Like your body start craving your pleasure yes. sensory. Yeah. And your brain is like reminding you that, you know, we used to eat some chicken, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's like, can we have that today? Was missing. But then a, you with me. Yeah. But they do, you know, when you're shopping, you do start looking for things that are, you know, vegetable oriented. Like um, I, I have found some uh, uh, frozen pizzas that's made out of cauliflower, cauliflower crust. So you know, there's one that I like that's some cauliflower crust pizza with um, spinach. And uh, so, you know, you find different things that you can incorporate into your diet when you make up your mind that you're going to uh, to do something. So I'm going to see how long it lasts. It's been, you know, this is all. August. I'm doing good. If, if I can make it to the end of the year, maybe I'll treat myself with some chicken for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> It'll satisfy that craving that you've been having for so long. So yeah. Or maybe Thanksgiving when we have turkey, you know, but I, you know. That, I, yeah. Turkey is good too, especially if it's cooked right. You know, you can't right. have no dry turkey. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Be, yeah. So well, that's great. And because I know it's it can be definitely a challenge for people to switch over to something like that. You know, even the first yes. three days, you're like, I'm hungry. You know, I, I I don't know if I can do this, you know, but it's like, I need somebody to maybe help me. Oh, you know, yes. how can I get started like that? It's, it's just yes. like a, a mind battle. And uh, sometimes I think some people can do it by themselves, but sometimes you do need that accountability, you know, somebody yeah, to help you hold your hand. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. To get you through it. Um, because once you break that mindset of, you know, I can't do this, you know, it'll definitely after the third day and by the end of the week, you're feeling great. You know, the, like you said, you're not feeling sluggish anymore. Your energy nope. level is a better, you know, you're, you're sleeping better. You know, you're yes. seeing the weight come off all that inflammation has been building up because of all the, you know, the processed food you've been eating, you know, you just yeah. start to see your body healing itself. And so that, I think that's so amazing. And then people are losing weight. So that's always an added bonus. <laughs> <laughs> well, most people always say, you don't have any weight to lose. Well, you know, yes, I do have some weight to lose because all of my life I was skinny mini. Even when I was pregnant with my daughter, I went to the, to the, to the hospital to have my baby. They said, what floor do you want to go to? I mean, I gained 20 pounds when I was pregnant. And so yeah. now for me to, uh, and all of my life, my goal was to get up to the minimum for my height, which was 130 for my height. And then when I had awakening that I was 30 pounds over my minimum, yes, I do have some weight to lose. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it. you feel better. Like once the weight is off, you feel better. Your joints are not, you know, not too much weight for yes. your joints to carry. You know, that makes a difference. You know, even though you don't feel it now, a long period of time, it definitely can, you know, cause some added stress to your joints and then eventually maybe have chronic pain as well. So, um, well, you answered some of the question about, you know, why is health and wellness important to you? Um, you answer that, it sounds like, unless you have some uh, something to add on to that, um, and why is it so important to you, health and wellness? Well, uh <clears throat> Yeah, health and wellness is is very important. And, and it is because of the fact that we as a country are overweight. OK, uh, most mm -hmm. people are are in an overweight capacity uh, and, and we don't realize that the things that we eat are, are causing us to have a chronic illnesses when we get older. And mm -hmm. I, sometimes when I'm 
shopping in the store, and even though now I'm making healthy choices, I, I can see people with things in their baskets that at one time was a norm for me. And and you want you have to refrain yourself from wanting to share <laughs> yep. with people when you're shopping because it's really, you know, their business. And it's really none of my business to try to share the, with them what my experience was. Now, if anybody was to walk up to me and say, why do you like that pizza that's made with cauliflower or crust or you know, why are you have so many vegetables in your cart? You know, then that would be an opportunity to share. But I do see so many people, the majority of the people shopping are putting processed foods, foods with a lot of salts, uh, you know, all of that stuff in their system, cereals with a lot of sugars on it and all of that. And really uh, it's starting a, a, a lifestyle that's going to lead them down the road to chronic illness. I am 73 years old. Just had my birthday of uh, the 18th of July. I want, I want to be the oldest millennial. Okay. So I want to be able to uh, go out on day dates with my granddaughter, who's 26, and go to dinner with her and, and not be a, a problem. I want to be able to uh, make sure that, you know, my presence is an enjoyment. And my granddaughter says to me all the time, Granny, how come you're not like all of my friends, grandmother? And I said, well, I don't know. Maybe it's the choices that they make because, you know, I, you know, I eat, you know, well and, and I do have a moderate uh, exercise program that I participate in on a regular basis. And so the whole idea is I do not want to be living and a burden. I want to be living with full health and um, able to be able to, to function to my best abilities. No, that's good. You're paving the way. You know, your grandkids are definitely learning from a great role model. So, you know, that is good. They are learning about what health is and, you know, how to be able to implement that in their life too as well. And so being 73 years old and happy birthday um, to you as well, <laughs> you know, most 73 years old, not out in their yard doing, you know, what you're doing, you know, the whole planning. I remember seeing that on Facebook and exercising <laughs> and, you know, definitely shift and especially for the black community you know we're so accustomed to you know these soul food and wow. um it's just I, I, it brings pleasures in my heart to see people that are actually caring about what they eat so um i'm glad that you're doing that mm -hmm. all right so what is a good exercise routine for women 50 and over well, I, I think that low impact, um, you have to keep in mind, um, you don't want to do things that are going to cause you to, you know, strain muscles or, you know, to, to maybe hurt your, your back and et cetera. So I started out my uh, exercises, well, well, as younger, younger, I, I, I was always participating in uh, some exercise club or, uh, you know, going on a regular basis. And I remember it was, it was about... <laughs> About 10 years ago, I went by myself a new step, you know, to do step aerobics. And I remember exactly the day when uh, that was not fun like it used to be. And so I still have that step, <laughs> but I use it to step up into my bed. I don't use it for exercise anymore because you don't want to do exercises that are going to cause you harm. You want to do exercises that you want to be able to benefit from. So. I do some moderate, low impact exercises um, using chair. I, you know, I do some chair exercise, some stretches, and you know, with my back and et cetera. And I do low impact, um, you know, exercises, you know, standing exercises with the arms and you know, stretching and, and that type of thing. So, I, I recently discovered um, a, a little product where you put it under your feet, and uh, it has a one side that's. Uh, slippery and the other side has like carpet on it so you could use it either on carpet or on the floor where you can um you know stretch your feet in and out keep a you know a regular motion or stretch your feet from side to side and oh, wow. uh, it, it just encourages you to keep moving and uh it just assists you in that so i use low impact exercises and uh, also i have a mobile bike that i um try to uh, uh ride on it for 30 minutes at least uh, three days a week and then the opposing days i do my low impact chair exercises or my low impact um standing exercises well that's good um 
what kind of low impact standing exercise do you do? Um, if you can name like a couple that you do, what's your, what's your routine? I don't have names for them. <laughs> I just don't do any jumping. I do like side to side, you know, I do like, you know, the um, jumping jacks, like modified jumping jacks. So I don't your arm jump. So well, yeah, it'd be, it'd be a modified. Yeah. So my, yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. My, none of my exercises deal with me getting uh, my body off the ground. Okay. <laughs> Hey, you're moving. So that's good. You know, most people are, uh, you know, are sitting down on the couch or doing something, you know, watching TV and not moving a whole lot. So yeah, you're getting up and you're definitely still exercising. And um, another good standing exercise, you probably do like some squats too, right? Maybe some uh, partial squats because that doesn't require any no, jumping. No, my knees issues. will not look my knees will not allow me to do squats. I, I had a knee injury uh, about 30 years ago. And um, I, I had a knee that went out of place and it looked out. So I, I'm not, I'm not capable. That's when I was reminded about stepping up on that step. You know, you can't do that. My knee said, no, we don't want right. to do that. But what yes, I do, absolutely. in addition to my exercises, my bike and my exercises, I work in my garden quite a bit. I um, created my first garden ever uh, uh -huh. last year. Yep. And um, I have three three walls on my back fence that I have successfully created gardens for. And in my backyard is very hard. I believe that um, I live in Lancaster, Texas. I believe that Lancaster used to be a mountain. Okay. Because you can't be a mountain. A mountain, yes. <laughs> yes, can't go awesome. Deep in this dirt without, you know, hitting rock. My grandson built my fence for me uh two years ago when i moved into this house and he dug up more rocks and stones from you know digging up those holes so i have very very hard ground and so on the days that i'm doing gardening i don't do exercise because that is my exercise for today <laughs> right no it is no i agree because you have to bend over you have to carry items you know right. you have to dig you know so it's definitely strenuous and so you got to do it on a cool day because you're in hot Texas. Yes, I'm in hot territory. <laughs> so yeah, I have Absolutely. to get early in the morning and do it, or I have to wait until after six o'clock in the afternoon. So the very first uh, garden that I dug was on my back fence. And that's when, you know, I actually did dig holes. And I tell you, it took me about three weeks to get all of the plants in the ground. And uh, I would come in at night and I could just barely make it to my bed and just lay there. And it seems like my body was hurting from toe up to my ears, you know, and I had to just recuperate. And um, right, yeah. talking about sweating, you do not sweat unless you are doing some digging here in Texas, well, in my backyard. So I learned that I don't like to dig. And so my other two gardens on the side, uh, those are all in planters, okay? Because Sister Girl does not like to dig in uh, a place that used to be a mountain. <laughs> I have so many That's rocks right. in my yard that I don't even have to pay for rocks. I just go around and, you know, collect rocks that are gathering up in the yard and keep them in bucket, And then I take them and put them into places where, I, you know, I'm trying to grow a rock garden. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Hopefully they don't discover any more rocks. <laughs> but oh, I, I, I doubt rocks. that. You're probably going to have, to, yeah, you're going to have some rocks there, it sounds like. So that's that's good that you're out there doing gardening. Maybe one day I'll be doing that too as well. So. Yeah, I'm going to call you and ask you some questions on what I need to do. <laughs> <laughs> we are thinking yes. about uh, putting together a family garden for ve vegetables. So, we, you know, all of my mm -hmm. gardens have been with flowers, um, learning new flowers and et cetera, because all of my life I've only had any success with ivy plants. Uh, and I've grown ivy for more than 30 years and given away. I don't know how many different sets of ivy plants. That's the only one I ever had any success with, but... In the last couple of years, uh, since I've had this garden, I, I have uh, discovered more plants, uh, plants that can survive in full sun. And uh, but my daughter and I are discussing with her two kids about us starting a family garden for uh, vegetables and fruit. Yep. And so we are looking to start um, a container uh, garden because we're not gonna we're not gonna dig. We like we learn we don't like to dig. And um, another thing that I am on the uh, road to doing right now is I bought some cherries, uh, some fresh cherries. And so I googled how to grow a cherry tree. 
So I do do have seeds that are, I am preparing right now to uh, put a cherry tree in my backyard. So uh, the process is that you you, uh, clean the seed very well. You put it in water for a couple of days and then you take it out of the water and you put the seeds in a plastic bag and put it in your refrigerator for 10 weeks. And that makes the seed pink that it's gone through the season. And when you take them out after 10 weeks, you can dig a hole and plant them and that will grow into a tree. So I think I have a couple of weeks left. My seeds are in the refrigerator now germinating. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. See, yeah, it should be sprouting too, right? Are you seeing anything? Well, uh, okay. no, they're not. Uh, so they're like sleep. According to what I Googled, yeah. When you put them in the refrigerator for 10 weeks, that's like sleeping over the winter. Okay. okay. All right. And then yeah, when can... you take them out of the refrigerator after 10 weeks and you dig uh, dig a hole and plant them, they think now it's like springtime is time to grow. So I, I'm going to see how that works and I'm going to see if I can, I'm going I'm to plant about three different uh, spots and see if I can get me a cherry tree in my backyard. <laughs> Well, hopefully you do, and I'll see pictures on, you know, Facebook. It's, it's well, I'm going to document when I plant it, and then yeah. if I get a little spurt, I'll document this is the beginning of my cherry tree. Good. Yeah, I'd be like, day one. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so uh, would you recommend someone to use a coach and why, especially with the Daniel Fast? You know, like I said, sometimes it can be very challenging for someone to be able to you know, continue onward, you know, after 21 right. days, some people, you know, they feel great um, after going through the process and then um, they're maybe looking for something, you know, to continue more, to be able to live a healthy lifestyle, you know, make better choices for themselves so that they can minimize all the chronic pain, like, you know, um, joint pain, you know, heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure. Right. So, Yeah, I think that uh, anyone who's starting something new, and um, that you know they've, they've never experienced before could probably you know benefit from having a coach to help them to understand uh, what to expect and to give them encouragement along the way. I guess you could say my daughter and I were coaches for each other. We gave each other encouragement. We were accountability partners during the Daniel fast, and uh, so that's the reason why you know I was successful in getting through the twenty one days. But then it was after the 21 days that I made my own personal commitment to continue. Of course, my daughter, it was up to her whether she did uh, continue or not. I think she's on a modified uh, vegetarian diet, but she does eat things that I have excluded from my diet. Because I don't eat chicken and um, uh, any other meats besides the seafood. So any situation, whether it's uh, dieting, exercising, or going into a, a new career venture, anything that a person is um, that has a desire to learn more about or to be successful at, they should get a coach to help them understand what they need to do to first of all um, get off the ro- you know get it off the road, uh, get it jump started, and to coach them and keep them accountable for accomplishing whatever goals that they want to get out of uh, the situation. So I always suggest a coach uh, if you're really serious about doing whatever your desire to do. Yeah, no, I agree too. Um, having someone, it's just like going back to playing sports, you know, as well, people have to have like coaches. I remember in high school and, you know, yes. playing basketball track um, or even like a business coach or something like that, or if somebody, you know, for help, reasons might need a coach to help them guide them along the way for like weight loss or, you know, any type of chronic right. illness that they're dealing with so they can help them establish a good plan and then set them on the way. Um, right. You know, cause not everybody can just be like Linda and just continue <laughs> on where, you know, <laughs> and be committed to it, you know, cause they all have that time where they right. like backslide or something like that, or indulge in like some cookies or something like that and ice cream, you know, cause they can have right. that craving and they, sometimes they can't fight it, but, um, I'm definitely, um, definitely agreeable with that too, as well. So, um, how can everyone find you on social media? Well, uh, my, um, YouTube 
channel is over 50 and loving it. And um, the whole premise of my YouTube channel is to uh, provide ideas, information, and news that my community can use. And I consider my community to be anyone who is either retired or looking to retire in the new, near future, and uh, you know maybe um, looking for things that they that may they may want to spend their time doing or learning more about. So I do videos on. Um, you know, different uh, aspects of um, learning how to reduce your property taxes and, um, you know, just being aware of uh, certain things that are uh, happening in the community right now. So Over 50 and Loving It is my YouTube channel and also the same name for my Facebook page, Over 50 and Loving It. So I would love for everyone to come and join my community and uh, so that we can see what's going on. Yes. Well, um, thank you for sharing your information with us. Um, I will have Linda's contact information down in the description box below as well as mine. And if you're new to this channel and have been watching for a while but haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to like and share uh, this video as well as hit the notification bell and so that you can get um, Notify that I uploaded new videos and I thank you for hanging out with us until next time. This is Dr. Ramona Lazar. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.